Hello, everybody. What's up? And uh, we are back for episode number, I forget, with um, Green Doge, uh, Jack, myself, and Hellkite, a.k.a. Volkite Hellkite, for those of you that know him. I am. I do be that dragon. The man from down under that knows about mechs and making cool shit. And Vegemite sandwiches. And Vegemite sandwiches. I was gonna. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring something up immediately here. All right, well, I mean, I was, those things are a national treasure, right? I'm gonna ask. <laughs> so my buddy Nassim, uh, he listens to the cast. Shout out to Nassim. He out. uh he and I we were playing some BattleTech, and he was he listens to the cast, and he's like, all you guys do is talk about sandwiches for at least 25 minutes an episode. <sighs> Man, an Italian a sub though. <laughs> and- oh. <laughs> All right, uh, no, John, hold up. Mate, so nothing wrong that. with a fucking sanger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, now I don't want to talk about sandwiches after he just called it that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I want to know what's what's the appeal of Vegemite. Oh, what's, Vegemite sandwich. What's oh, the deal with yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Also, okay. what the fuck is it? What is Vegemite? Vegemite is essentially all right. All right. We were just talking about Australia being. A booze flotilla, you know. We're all drinking. I know it's the morning for me, but it's Australia. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. I literally was like, "Hey, you don't. We usually drink, but you don't have to." And he said, "Fuck off! It's Australia." Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm here Earth. drinking my fucking uh, hydrocarbons. But that's the thing about Vegemite beer. When you make it, it has a sort of byproduct, a yeasty byproduct. Okay, so is now, Vegemite just a beer spread? Essentially, it's White. it's the byproduct that you get left behind in the still, mix it up until it's you know basically like the butter version of that thing's milk, and it was originally marketed as a health superfood for children. Oh it's yeah, it's basically just it's beer Why excess. The fuck? Why the fuck is it called Vegemite? Dude, when I was a kid, it's it was technically made of vegetables. Oh my god. <laughs> it's yeast. This is, this is America levels of reaching going on right now. Yeah. No, like, I, hey, I, at least we're not owned by the sugar lobby, okay? Yeah, like, you're right, though. You're right. <laughs> people died right. because I tried to say yeah. sugar wasn't God. In- <laughs> Dude, I hate sugar for personal reasons. Oh, you, yeah, you sugar you tried to kill right. me. Yeah. There was an you attempt on my life. You have very if, good reasons to hate sugar. I don't like <laughs> sugar because I hate things that are sweet. I love things that are salty and bitter. It tastes good. Uh, so why don't you like Vegemite? I've never, so I've never tried it. Never you tried don't it. want don't to. Have that. Really? You don't want to. I, I'm, I'm kind okay, of It's sort of like though. a Marmite. It's one of those standard... The fuck okay. is Marmite? Marmite is, is the, the British U- version of K- Vegemite, has. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yes. It came after Vegemite. I've had Marmite now, is, before, and it was not there bad. Is another version. There is another version of it called Promite, which is... Easier Pro-mite. to spread and a lot less Marmite, concentrated yeah. in its flavor. And I don't, that's I'm probably sure. easier for people. I feel because it is a very strong, like bittery flavor. I don't know, Jack. You might be into it, bro. Okay, I'll have to give it a try. You might be into it. Okay, well, here's the thing. Uh, I've never had Vegemite before, though. But what I have, Australians, we Australians about your veg, uh, about our Vegemite, and how you guys react to it. We generally think. Right. Yeah, sorry. We uh we generally we think that you Seppos just don't like it because your instinct is to slather everything on at least an inch thick onto one slice of bread. Like Kinder of Surprises are banned in your country because kids try yeah. to inhale the toy capsule with the egg in one go. So so that's so. the rumor that goes around. We have Kinder eggs. No, we don't. We, yes, we do. We they're, have I, different they're not the same. They're functionally not the same. It is not the same candy. No, we, they don't we have get plastic on the inside. Yeah, well, there's, there's yeah, micro plastic, but it's not actual. Yeah, they get like, a cool ass toy, yeah. and we get like stickers inside. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I know we get it's, like, a little, it's a little bit different. I looked into it when I worked at a candy store. Okay, I was going to say, like, I've seen them in stores. Yeah, so that, that's, a, yes. that's the safe version to sell. Ah, okay. yes. But it, it's it's, it's funny a, that we have to do that. It, it's, it's like the world. Yeah gave us like a childproof electrical outlet because we were that stupid with candy of all things candy yeah and so this is why uh, we think you guys don't like vegemite because no one would like it if all you do is jam a spoon into the tub get as much as you can in one go and then layer that as thick as you can on the space it takes 
you know, I mean, we Australians, we do do that. Just right. a, a, veg- right. a, little, a little teaspoon, Vegemite, lick it for a little bit as a kid. It's just, you know, whatever. But to eat that, eat it that thick on bread. There was a Jimmy Kimmel episode where some Australian guy shows him how to use it. You get your toast, you put your butter on it, you get the little bit and you spread it thin as a flavor enhancer. And it's pretty good. So it's just two slices of bread and some Vegemite, right? Well, yeah. You okay. don't slather it on. You just no, no, no. I agree. Thin. Let it be a bit brown rather than black sludge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> say the most Rexia. American thing ever here. I'm kind of I'm gonna draw some parallels to burger culture. Oh, so yeah. the hamburger initially in America was not served with cheese. It was not served with like lettuce and tomatoes and all that shit. It was just burger, like a hamburger, like yes. um, patty, right? Beef and then you had, like, somewhere. Yeah, you'd have some, like, maybe a pickle chip, maybe some mustard, maybe some ketchup. Maybe that's it. And if you look at some variations, like a slug burger, where that's made, it's basically like a meatball um, as, the, as the patty. It's, um, like, day-old bread mixed with um, beef patty, and then it adds, like, kind of a, a different texture to it. But again, that's just, um, that. yeah, it, it's just uh, a bun, some mustard slathered on there, the slug burger patty. And then maybe a pickle chip. And a lot of these diner style burgers are like that. And it's because you want it to be like a combination of things, very minimal. Um, kind of like wanna, the vegetable. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. Exactly. Now you can do some variations of the wheel, absolutely. And then you have like whatever the hell Red Robin is making now, where you have these just totally overloaded like sacks of just cholesterol and red meat and shit like that. Because that's what America does, is we, we take a food like that, even one of our own homegrown staples, and it's like, how can we make this just, like, pimped the fuck out? Also, and I hear that, that there was a there was a early stages of McDonald's, there was a competitor burger store, which saw that Macca's was selling quarter pounders, and they sold third pounders, but because three is a smaller number than four, yeah. they didn't sell. So that's so real, was- that's A and W, it was the third pounder burger. It was a. It was like one third pound of meat. Or like, Americans oh, really that. Yeah. yeah. No. This. This was a yes. thing that happened. A and W literally just like don't know math. And it was a. It was a big ass burger, dude. It was a real thing. Like this happened. Dude, I'd like name just the third pounder. It looked. It, it looked good. Like, oh man, I'm guessing you're average American. <laughs> oh, I'm guessing the 56 percent of meme is coming to life. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, man. So. Yeah, Vegemite's just something I've always been like, that's so interesting. And I'm sorry, guys, for throwing so much shade to your country and all. No, it's, it's cool. Just nat- it it's just a natural day. instinct for Australians to do it because we lost the war to fucking emus. I, so. I was going to say, it, it's okay because at least we live in a country where we can walk outside without fear of death from every animal nearby. Oh, it's okay. All you got to do is throw your boomerang at their sun harness and they fall right <laughs> uh, in. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Burns was telling me he was having some issues getting a new sun harness. I think his last one snapped. <laughs> yeah. You don't know about this, Green? Yeah, I know about the sun harness. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So, gentlemen, what are we drinking tonight? Uh, fucking water, because oh. I'm not feeling... Why didn't you just tell us that you're a gay? Absolute coward. Yep. <laughs> I'm yep. drinking. Oh, look, now that Vulcan's not here, someone has to drink the water. Yeah, Vulcan will be back. I think he's just busy doing other stuff right now. Yeah, I'm he's, sure he'll be back. he's busy watching probably Forged and Fire on the Discord right now. <laughs> I'll put up in the thumbnail that <laughs> I'm missing. Have you seen me, Vulcan poster? Yeah. <laughs> like last episode? What is yeah. he fucking? So, Hellcat, what are you drinking? I'm drinking 11 year old Glenallahi Scotch whiskey. Oh, man. So it's an is it a is it a Scottish whiskey or is that a well it's um it's it was made in Australia so it's not it's Natru Scotsman. Marcus Meekham right now is getting real mad at the fact that it's called Scotch but it's not made in Scotland. Uh, but, okay. <laughs> dude, yeah, there's gonna be some. I mean, hell, I have some listeners that are gonna be like, dude, no, it's not. It's Scotch made in Australia. That's not Scotch. Yeah, well, two thirds of our colonists were Scotch and Irish freaking prisoners. So That's fiddly true. D potatoes. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the Australian Ted Kaczynski, Ned Kelly, was an Irishman, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. I just, just, I mean, he's related to that dude who owns Paddy's Pub. 
Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah, you know, nice. Charlie Day. Yeah. <laughs> Very good boy. Green uh, brought over this. Uh, what, what is this, Green? It's uh, Colorado Stocky Company. Handcrafted blueberry hibiscus flavor. It's like weird. It's really sweet. Yeah. But, like, not in a bad way. Like a blueberry kind of sweet. But like a like a hibiscus freshness. It's actually got a really good know, body. Dude, to it's it. it. It was American sake, and I was like, I'll, I'll give it a try, dude. I'm gonna be real. It looks like it. It, it looks like uh like vinaigrette olive oil. Hmm. Okay. It looks it's like awesome. something you'd buy in the grocery store to like marinate your steak in. Yeah, but no, the really bottle good. does look weird, Ooh. but uh, it doesn't taste that bad. I like it. I think it's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a paper plane later of that, too. Just because of that, I'm gonna try and. Do something similar to that with a Bourguignon tonight. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Tell me how that is. I will. But also, my other thing I'm drinking is some vodka peach iced tea shit. That's the play, dude. I got some of that in my fridge right now. Yeah. Love drinking that stuff straight, man. We here in the south. The deep south. (laughs) You're so far south, you're actually on the other side. (laughs) Yep. I so is Australia the deep south? Well, we're further south than even, like, Florida. Exactly. So that means that, like, the Southerners and Florida, Floridians are posers. They're not even real Southerners. It's clearly yeah. places like Argentina and Australia. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are your first line of defense against the Antarctic and gene stealers. Thank God. Yeah. I knew something was going on down there. I was talking to Flork about that. He wants us to do an episode on uh, Antarctica. Yeah. Because there's some weird shit down. that goes down down there. Like, what the yes. fuck? Man? We should get Werner Herzog in as well, talk about... I'd be down. It's going down. bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I, I picked you out, Volkite, because I wanted to talk about Battletech. I've been playing it a lot lately. and just I've just Good. been really enjoying the game. It's, it's got this a really is- nice t- rule set. I like how um, you can pretty much play it functionally for free if you play your cards right. You don't have to buy it. Well, anything. yeah. And um, yeah. as a 40k don't tell guy, Catalyst. I was, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> not going to tell Catalyst. They, they blocked me. Just, yeah. Too, like, yeah, they cool. blocked me too. Oh, wait, yeah. no, they haven't blocked me. Oh, they haven't? Oh, okay. All right, we got a man on the inside, boys. <laughs> but, um, so I, I found your, your video way back in, like, May of last year because I was oh. like, I don't know anything about Battletech except the oh, fact my introduction? That, yeah. It was, your introduction video was excellent. And I was like, this guy's cool. And then I'm, like, posting stuff. And then I saw you lurking in my comment section. I'm like, wait a minute. I think I know this guy. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. Hang and I was like, oh, someone's YouTube video. <laughs> So yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to bring you on just kind of to you know expand on that why it's such an interesting one game to play and two the world is very it's different I would it's a hard yeah. sci-fi setting without the hard sci-fi elements for a lot of it you know well, there's no aliens anywhere well the thing is right um, what I enjoy about it is that it is within reason a fairly hard sci-fi setting because like. Most space opera sci-fi has to have the caveat of some form of faster-than-light travel. You have to have it. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise how are you going to go from the stars? How do you do anything? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, The Expanse has no FTL, and it's got communication breakdown just in our own system, which is cool. Yeah. But Battletech being, a, you know, space opera with planetary governments being, like, nothing compared to the great star-spanning empires, you need FTL. So... Yeah. They've got it, necessarily. What I like is that they've also got an FTL communication system, which I may have wiretapped, um, just to be able to function. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I, yes. Like they've got all of the things of the communication breakdown, and when people say, oh, but the technology wouldn't go down that bad. Okay, well, you've seen those old, old Necoria pods that they can't rebuild or repair. Lost tech is actually a thing. They yeah. go into detail why the setting is the way it is from what it could have been. I like all of that. It's fairly hard. The only soft parts, in my opinion, are Fasacorp not knowing economy as well as they should if they want to be perfect at it, which, you know, they're right. making a game. They're not economists, whatever. Yeah. Um, Fasacorp not being actual engineers, so they don't know density of mass versus surface area on the ground. 
problems, but they're not engineers, they're game designers, so whatever. And the other part being bipedal weapons platforms are actually shit with their high center of mass and their yeah. low space to control their balance. But it's a game about fucking giant robots, so shut up, nerd. Yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that oh, like, it's literally oh, yeah. so much shit is just literally decided by big robots like fighting each other, almost like a duel. There's yeah. very little like ship to ship combat. It's all well, yeah. It's all you don't want on ship to ship combat. I, I love that because I love that. Well, yeah. I mean, I've seen one post somewhere on TG, and it perfectly encapsulated why. You don't need to have it be the most realistic thing in the world. And that is simply, if you want to play a realistic sci-fi game, all you do is you play naval battles and you don't play naval battles either because everyone's already nuked each other into extinction. Yeah. There you go. GG, fuck off. That's I've, I've seen that fun. with a few settings where it's the, the sci-fi is literally so hard that it's it, it's almost unfun to kind of like explore and learn about the world. Um, exactly. I would say an example of that that's not bad would be like endless space, but that's built around the ship to ship combat. You know? Yes. So that I'm okay yeah. with that. I, I like that aspect of it because it you do have those big big fuck off battles in space. In an and endless space it, it works. Yes. But but the thing about Battletech is like I've just been describing the 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 caveats as to why it's uh, why yeah. you should accept it, even. But the good things about it, the beautiful things about it, right? Is that it's not Game of Thrones in space. It's that's that was sure. something when I I heard I'm about looking it. Into it. Like, hmm. Yeah, I'm not looking into it with specifically like I haven't got a timetable in front of me. Who does that? But yeah. I think it may be older than Game of Thrones. I think it might be. Oh, uh, yeah, because I mean, Game yeah. of Thrones, I think, was written in, like, what, the 90s? Uh, yeah, Battletech's and this is from 84. The 80s. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's not Game of Thrones in space. Is, uh... Game of Thrones is fantasy Battletech. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, elaborate on that. Well, it's simple. All of the politicking and the Byzantine uh, empire building and the great families deciding to fall to their own idiosyncrasies rather than work together, creating more violence and war. And oh, look at that. From the galactic north, we've got these barely human monsters coming down and marauding their way across everything and taking out a huge chunk of humanity. The clans. Oh, yeah, man, I can't really argue with that, actually. You, you kind of hit the nail on the head. On, I, I, I thought you were, like, memeing, but you were dead serious. I'm not dead serious. I'm, a, I'm still breathing. But, you know, I'm not exactly... Not serious. So, what I like about BattleTech is is the mech designs. I like how oh, it, it's fuck yes. And I know I know friends of mine that are like engineers and stuff that love planes. They're like, yeah, man, the BattleTech mechs are like pseudo plausible. Like hypothetically speaking, uh, they find they find a way to at least keep them from falling over completely. Yes. You know, you and have the design like where it is like a, an M1 Abrams with like chicken legs. Yeah, totally. But then you have stuff yes. like the Atlas or like the Orion, and it's like, okay, I can see how that would like move, hypothetically speaking. Damn, and I love the trebuchet the that's already leaning on its side. Dude, what's up with the trebuchet, man? That thing looks like the special kit at recess. <laughs> the trebuchet, like, I, okay. Uh, the trebuchet was built to be a counterpoint to the Centurion. The Centurion is that. Uh, that oh, was I a love the Centurion. Yeah. The sketch that Flying Debris originally made for MechWarrior Online for it, I thought this is going to be the best fucking MechWarrior game. But, but no, no, they made it squarer, they made it blockier, they made it splay out less. It did not look nearly as dynamic in the game. But the original Dude. concept art, that thing with its little Praetorian crest on the helmet and the little extra shield space on the arm and shoulder on the Slorica Segmenter, yes. The trebuchet was built to be a fire support for that, to work in pairs. That makes sense because it's uh, it's about the same tonnage. What is it, 50, 55? Yeah, so 50. 50. Oh, here, 50. Now, the trebuchet, it looks goofy because it was function first, whereas the centurion was form and function. Yeah, but the centurion's cool and, it, and it's awesome. Yes, and my centurion like, ripped the guy out of the cockpit and killed him in a game. See, and so, yeah, that's, that's my argument before of like bipedal weapon platforms being bad in real life. The way you make them good is you make them look too cool not to watch. Literally, dude. I remember seeing this. I, when I was a kid, 
I saw the Mad Cat, and I was like, I don't know what that thing does, but you won't survive that. Either those huge no. lasers are going to kill you, or the 40 fucking missiles are going to kill you. Or, or you'll just get stepped on. My personal favorite is a dead heat between the Black Knight Based. and... Yeah, the Black Knight. I mean, its name is good. It looks it looks, yeah, it's yeah. fucking sick. It looks hot. It's solid. Then you get the jihad era one with the fucking sword and shield. It's like, no, here yeah. we go. The, yeah, yeah, the Red Reaper. Oh my god, it's so fucking cool. Yeah, man. What do you think about the? I've got one? my own. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing very. Really. Nothing very. Really. We're just like, oh man, the 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 the, the Blakest Comstar players are here. Yeah, guess yes, what? Guess what? It's the cool shit. It's the cool. It's shit, pretty man. cool, man. But it's okay, no more water. You've ever played Wolfenstein? Look, the Marauder's all right compared to the Black Knight. You're right. It is yeah, the Marauder. The Marauder is okay. The Marauder desperately needs those massive bonus quirks that it's got. Otherwise, yeah. it is trash. Yeah, I don't care who I piss off by saying this. It is trashed here. Oh, I've got two PPCs and an auto cannon. Oh, okay, cool. You spent nine times to do the same damage as a one-ton medium laser at double range. So you can mix <laughs> up two PPCs that you can't fire without overheating at a standstill. Cool. Damn. <laughs> He's taking names well, today, fellas. Yeah, man. Oh, what's that? But, Your legs have got basically only a ton of armor each at 75 tons? Yeah, cool. <laughs> damn. My counter argument to that would be the uh, the, the 2C. Thumbs up. It's oh, the 2C? 2C well, fun. yeah, if you make anything clanner, it immediately becomes better. Oh, sure. yeah. What's that? We made we made the guns all like half the weight and we uh, gave them better range and all damage. Oh, and, and the better heat sinks, too. Don't forget the heat sinks. Oh, oh, let's yeah, add heat sinks that can fit in the legs. <laughs> let's add even more. Yeah, our double heat sinks are double, not triple. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, uh, what, what are your guys' uh, favorite uh, missile boat, Mech? Kraken. Uh, Kraken's good. Cool. That's, that's a deep cut. That's a deep cut. I like that, that one. Sound, yeah, that sounds cool. pretty cool. For volume, you good. can't beat the Kraken. Let me show you. I'm going to pull up an image of the Kraken here for green. For me, I got to go with the Archer, man. It's either yeah. the Archer or... Okay, uh, Archer... Archer for replaceability. Like, oh, oh no, I've lost two thirds of my archer. That's okay. We'll just get another one at the shop. Yeah, Literally, yeah, dude. The, the archer is so good. Like, so this is the kraken. Ooh, yeah, that's I, pretty I, cool. I, I also have to go with the archer. It's just, it's, the archer is just a classic. Dude, it does the, its job. Yeah, I'm, is... I'm the odd one out then because I like the longbow a lot. Longbow's good too. I was about longbow's to say the longbow. Really cool. the longbow is great. A variant of the longbow. If you don't I have want made the... a variant of the longbow. Which oh, really? uses instead of yeah, it doesn't use LRM fives. It uses T bolt fives. Ooh, because yeah. they've only got a fifty fifty chance to actually get affected by the AMS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jack's like, I understand what that means. I you love then my give it a lighter <laughs> engine, a compact gyro. You can shove a bloodhound active probe in the center torso and still get your small laser for uh, wet work. Very I don't nice. know. I like the longbow. Longbow is really good, man. Yeah, until so there's an yeah. annihilator across the map that's just shooting you down with Gauss rifle. Cry hard. Uh, okay. Cry hard. Uh, <laughs> talk, yeah. Okay. The clans. Okay. If you want to talk about clan shit? Damn! What holy shit! Good. The clan mechs are good. Big fucking surprise. <laughs> like, man, well, guess who you know keeps running up? clan mechs it's in me. our lance games? It's me. <laughs> I was using the Wolf's Dragoons box. I, I uh, don't want to hear it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, Wolf's Dragoons. <laughs> fair enough, but. Yeah, exactly. We live in a the society yeah. <laughs> over where I am. Oh, yeah. and we live in a little, the society. Just goes full Joker yes. mode. Yeah. My little, my little trashy head cannon that I'm sort of writing documents for. I have no art for it, but whatever. Let the rules, let the games, let the gameplay itself speak for itself. Um, I call it the Blakest Nightmare. Now, if you know about the word of Blake, you yeah. might have known about the Celestials. Oh God! You know He's what the so Celestials mad. are? Yeah. He's so mad. Yeah. Okay, so it's not um, that. It's just the word of Blake. I'm just like, I can't believe they allowed it to get this bad. Bad or good? They were liquid ocelot. Yeah, exactly. What with feral fibrous? Yeah. No, no, the liquid ocelot. Okay, I'm going to take over the Patriots and cause the world to be set aflame, war everywhere. Also, I can make the Patriot AI. Accept me as definitely their guy so I can destroy them from within and show the world how awful war is so that everyone tries to disarm. Base. That's Holy the word God. of Blake's. 
that was the 6th of June and the Toyama cult and the Seventh Day Adventists. Wait, no, that's the wrong. The 6th of June yeah, Adventists. Yeah, yeah, the Seventh Day Adventists are those weirdo Oh my products. god. Well, Sorry, okay, Rod, okay. Some, dude, he just went to full fucking Senator Armstrong there for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. War is bad for business, so I will use war to profit off of business to end all war. Exactly. Well, no. I love okay, it. Well, for Will of Blake, there is a picture, and I will send it to whoever I have to so they can put it up on the screen for the actual send video. Yeah, but, but there is a picture which is made by TG. It's just the perfect uh, poster for the Jihad era, and it's just First Succession War Two Electric Boogaloo. Everyone yeah. dies edition. So I do like the Jihad era, like, a lot. Yeah. Everyone gets play in it. Yeah, that's, that's what I like the about it. The periphery actually got like new designs the for guys. themselves. The great houses are doing stuff. Mercenary companies are getting fucked over. And Tom starts. Yeah, some big ball. names going down. Yeah. Shit getting shaken up. The, at the same time, the clans are losing their mind at the society, showing that the warrior hunter. Holler at me. Oh, the, the, um, and meanwhile, all of this shit happening with Revolver Ocelot going crazy. Up in the clan space, we've got the society making Fox die. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's also Wait, we got Fox die in, in the uh, Pretty much, yeah. Battle Tech universe? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Metal Gear, baby. So, oh, yes, our okay. idea of okay. making some Metal Gear Rays and Rexes for Battle Tech. Yeah, he, I have so already cool. made it. Up. I already yeah. made it as a super heavy so it could fit a long tom in the side torso and oh. arm. Oh. Let's we were talking about go. it before about like Metal Gear we bring Metal Gears and we can use them in our in our games. Yeah, yes, he's like I, riding as like okay. a uh, like an elemental suit. I am not one the riding, all end all one. the lore, <laughs> but I am very good with the rule set. And um, back in the days of the Boomatech server and everything oh, like God. that, no, uh, the I was the I was the dude who made. Whenever someone's like, "Hey guys, can we make this?" I made a Viper LAM barely able just to carry an Arrow 4 bomb. Nice. That's fucking nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't even... Uh, do we talk about the incident? I don't even know if we no, should. We, we just refer to it as the incident and we leave the it The incident. I don't, I don't yeah. know who Boomer Tech is. Uh, uh, okay. Cause of the Better incident. For, well, we are talking it's... about Battle Tech and at some point we're going to probably need to talk about the real life social meta. Yeah. So, yeah, here is that. Yeah, we got to talk about that <laughs> games too. Uh, so, it's okay. let's save that for later. I, I figured it out. Yeah, man. let's I, let's put a pin in that for now, because like, yeah. Okay, well, okay, so we'll let it reach its natural conclusion. My yes. So in my shitty head cannon, which I'm calling the Blakest Nightmare, <laughs> I I keep getting more and more vindicated with it though. Uh, I find out that Ben Rome or Ben Home, whatever, he was planning for something like what I designed. To happen. Okay. Uh, with the Ghosts of Obida book that just came out for the RPGs, like it's got a whole bunch of stuff to do with finding the hidden five worlds in the Dark Ages, towards the end of the Dark Ages. Yeah. So it's got all this stuff to do with all the AI research that was happening on the Obida, and it has a lot of little, um, how do I put it? A lot of VI hologram displays of news snippets and propaganda, all of which shows bit by bit that the word of Blake is still A, active, alive, and well, and B, they are still everywhere. You just don't know where because you're looking inward. They are in the deep periphery. I do like the enemies in our midst stuff. That is, that is yes, really cool. That, that's cool. Hail that Hydra and Especially all that. For, uh, yeah, the good guys in our midst. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but in my version of this event... The Blakists saw that, okay, okay, the coalition is formed. This is fine. This is a worthy successor. Devlin Stone, oh, uh, Devlin Stone, not Davian Steiner or whatever. Okay. But they're at least getting everyone to work together. We'll put up a token fight and we'll evacuate. We've got the super jump drive. We can repair the drive and we do the jump. We'll go to the, you know, past the Caliban Nebula or whatever. Right. They are in the, in my, uh, Blakist Nightmare thing that I'm releasing eventually. It's the Blakists fled to the deep periphery and set everything up. In the Ghost of Obita book, the canon says that they evacuated the hidden worlds to go to the deep periphery. Why the fuck would you evacuate the hidden worlds on warships if you weren't going to yeah. house them somewhere? 
It would almost be as bad as like a dude eating Capicola and putting it near his mic. Oh, a Capicola, Jack. This shit's what good. Doing? What are you talking about? What are you What are you crinkling into your mic? Oh, dude, I'm building a uh, dresser right now. I got from Amazon. God, in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> Yeah, the flat pack adventures <laughs> of. I got, <laughs> I got I got some furniture in right now. I have to build my furniture. I don't know. What the... Like right now? Yeah. Come on, he moved recently. He's still got to get the place together. Hey, I'm yeah. moving soon. I understand, but yeah, but yeah. I'm so, so this um, the Blakest nightmare is basically the word of Blake leaving the inner sphere, going to the deep periphery. They bump into the society. And rather than the first instinct of everyone in the inner sphere who the Blakists claim to be so much more enlightened than, and declaring war immediately, they go, okay, you guys fled the clans and you are scientists who want to just be scientists. Okay. I like that. Well, that's that's like, how, about, always, how about we form a lot of shit from MGS3? Yeah. Yes. Now, hell, hell yeah. There were some quibbles, such as why the fuck are geneticists the be- the highest rank amongst your society? Like, seriously, you try not to be the clans, and yet you're still going on about the trueborn shit. Yeah, well. Well, I mean, that's well, what's what in would... the clan nature, though, is that they, they yes. claim that they're nothing like the inner sphere, but there's so much yes. like the inner sphere. But the thing is, the scientist caste that made the society are trying to break away from the clans that they hate so much. They don't want to be led by a pseudo spiritual yeah. military hunter. And on top but, of that, they were just not. They were, well, if you're in Smoke Jaguar, basically every day you were fighting for well, your life. Well, here's the thing: they didn't want to be around furries. That's what it really was. Yeah, yeah. Here they are, yeah. still genetically engineering and calling that the highest calling of science. Like, yeah, but they're on, not guys. naming it after animals, which makes it not furries. Yeah. Okay. They're still getting um, brain-altering drugs. They're still getting. <laughs> they're still getting brain-altering drugs to make you compatible with Quad Protomex, so you can be the animal. But. But still, the Blakist in me looks at that and says, no, no, no. Look, as much as I want to say astrophysicist and stuff like that would be the highest calling of science, no. Engineering. Because without them, neither of our callings can function outside of theory. Hell, okay. Think of it this way. After... This is going to be... After World War II... Yeah, yeah, okay. Who did we get to build material. some rockets? Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm just thinking of that. I'm like, I, I know that's where they got that idea from. Like, 100%. <laughs> but, so, in the Blakist Nightmare, the society and the word of Blake kind of joined forces. And okay. to signify this, I've made a bunch of ill clan era Blakist mechs oh, and fucked. combat fucked. vehicles and stuff. And it's not just uh, okay I say that the Ill Clan era is a bit of a boondoggle, it's a bit of a shithead It's so no fucking lame. Like it's it's such a low Welcome point. to the Ill Clan era where yeah. clan tech is given, not earned. That, that made me so mad dude, because every time I read about it and I'm like oh man, it must be hard to like get this clan tech stuff and all of the clan mechs even on like 2k were like really shot full of holes and destroyed. I mean, even Aiden Pride's mech, the only thing that survived was a small laser. And then it's just yeah. like, magically, everybody has these mechs again. And I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah, fuck no. it. We want people to buy our mechs. So that it at least works with mechs. my favorite clan, uh, Diamond Shark, now Sea Fox, where they were like, look, we're willing to sell our services. If you would like clan technology, you will have to pay a high price. But again, that's neither given nor earned. It's just bought. Yes. But However, that doesn't excuse all of the fucking clan wolf tech and all that so, dumb shit. With oh, and the resurrection of the Jaguar on Terra? What was up with that, dude? Oh, hey, man, look, look. Oh. I don't hate that there were some smoke Jaguar people left behind in prison camps that Devlinstone freed and said, hey, look, we'll let you be the Fidelis if you be our guardians. I don't hate that. Okay. But what I do hate is... No, it doesn't feel right, but also yeah. Devlin Stone was desperate to kill the word of Blake. So any and any ally I can find, I yeah, will that use. is that is true. Now, in that era, using clan tech doesn't make you stand out, and that's what makes it like literally following the clan invasion too. Like this literally yes, comes up right after the clan invasion, and it's just so. How do you make? Uh, so how do you make the new Blakists stand out 
in the you age of a cool with... knight with a sword and shield. Yeah, man. You just make the celestials. Them. You remake the celestials using clan tech, but not just any old clan tech. You use society tech. What does that even mean? <laughs> it means it's got like they, you, they you get you the call, Joker as a scientist. You, yeah, man. He's just in there. He's like. Okay, the society Batman. uses a, a eugenics Batman. program. Nobody bats Okay, eye. well, the word of okay, Blake we has know... a eugenics program. Well, we <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, We've got brains. Okay, we've got proto mechs using brains in the jar as a control system. We've got yep. um, we've got C three computers built into our celestials. Fuck it, they're the old guys. That's what the militia get. Our Mane Domini of this new age use the Nova EC uh, the Nova EWS suite, which has okay. an active probe, an ECM suite. And a reallocable C3 network <laughs> built in. Bro, fucking nuts, dude. This would be really yeah, fun we, to play. We give our shit uh, interface cockpits because, well, now nobody can use them. Oh, but the Clan Wolf has interface cockpit Stormcrows. Yes, clan the Skinwalker wolf, is cool. Oh my God. The Skinwalker is cool, but that's EI interface. We're talking VDNI cockpit interfaces cockpits that way only blakists can use it unsalvageable by the enemy if you want to use it because you haven't got vdni you haven't yeah, the got the blake is just so smart and cool you haven't got jack is just jerking himself off this whole conversation <laughs> oh, he's building a dresser <laughs> yeah he's building a dresser yeah, as I'm building my dresser, I'm jerking it to uh, well, oh, where to Blake jerking. Well, the only <laughs> well, way you're going to make it stand out is if you go like, absolutely oh, crazy. <laughs> is oh, if you man. actually show what the tech can do put together. Like, okay, do you know what the Archangel in particular is meant to do? I do not. It's a hundred tonner with like 36 tons of pod space. Okay. That's... It's woefully undergunned. Yeah, I was going to say. But my alternative version, which I call the Faust, instead of being named after angels, they're named after arch demons like Faust, Belphegor, Baal, Asmodeus, because they're monsters. We are the monsters that everyone fears, so let's be that. Yeah, the Faust itself was the original uh, attempt to collaborate between the Blakists and the society. You know, the deal of the devil from both of their perspectives. Right. So yeah, it was John, originally all I heard to... there was guilty gear. I so. yeah, well, it was originally meant to be called the Lucifer, you know, the original, you know, the original great fiend. But because of the nature of it all in the working together with with people who should be their enemies, both forces, both factions over the course of creating this, formed a strategic alliance and called this thing the Faust as it was the thing that caused them to realize how well they worked together. And so they both basically made their Fausty impact with each other. And the Faust is the Archangel. It's cheaper. It's more powerful. It's got better pod space. It's harder to steal, easier to repair, and it's more durable. <laughs> All I had to do was give it an interface cockpit, take out the gyroscope, and armor the engine. And it was done. It was easy. Why didn't, why didn't anybody think of this? Like, Dude, oh, it's because making a custom mech in Battletech is like self-harm. It is. Oh, it's like, so I, I, I admire bro. people that sit there and they're like, I'm going to make a custom mech real quick, or I'm going to modify this, and they, they print out like a mech sheet. And they make do you it. not it's use like, Mega Mech? I do not, no. Oh, okay, well, Mega Mech well, comes with yes, Mega Mech. It's okay. a Java face thing. It's been since it's been around since two thousand and two. It's yeah, twenty two years old now. It's old enough to vote. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna report Catalyst Games for telling me to not like, to just use their sheet and their dumb books. Fuck you, Catalyst Games. I'm not. Yeah, it comes with that. every single unit. Okay, from cool. Infantry to warships. Oh, dude, sweet. You can play Hell in yeah. space. Okay, you can yeah. play in a, in a space battle. Yo, um, I was going to ask you guys because I'm new to Battletech. Do they ever fight in space? Yes. Yes. And it's got relativistic Newtonian physics and an attempt at them in the rule set. You don't yeah. just yeah, you move and you don't just move in that turn. You accelerate or decelerate by a number of hexes every turn. Um, 
I remember reading like can- the campaign book that they came out where they're like, oh, "Yo, yes. if you really want to be like a crackhead for BattleTech, you can <laughs> fucking play your space and I know battle." What I do. Yeah, play your space battle at the same time you're playing an inter like continental battle Holy over shit. this over here. There is and like just play so literally for months on end for one for one game. Yeah, green your mind's got to be blown coming from Gunpla and Gundam to this. Like yeah, yeah. I mean um, Gunpla like Gundam's fight in space that's like normal. I just haven't seen it yet in BattleTech. Okay, BattleTech you don't want to use battle mechs in space. You, you, okay, in space. yeah, because they're just not maneuverable enough. I mean, slow. think about it this way. Um, remember how yesterday your Orion took a gyro hit and almost fell over? Yeah. You'd probably just fall over in space by walking. <laughs> you have to do a piloting check every fucking They also don't turn. move fast enough. The, in the Battletech scale, aerospace, get, you know, okay, so you got your walk and your run speed for everything, and it's just like how many hexes you move. Multiply that by eight, and that's how fast aerospace move on Battletech. Holy yeah. <laughs> shit. Yeah. That's something so, that I really yeah. admire in the game, too, is how you can just kind of have this... It's a combined arms game at its core. You don't it, have it to is. have mechs. That's the fun yeah, part about no, it. Yeah, that's what's really cool about it. I that's could play a like. modern war simulation game by using only there is a, tanks and helicopters. There is something yeah. called TRO 1945. I mean, the Shrek puts, tank is, like, insane. That thing yeah, looks fucking yeah. sick, and I want but, one. But in Battletech, the there's, there's, a, there's, there's a readout called TRO 1945, which has... Mm-hmm. World War Two era mechs, not yeah. mechs, what? tanks. Yeah. World War Two era tanks, all started for the sake of playing World War Two oh. in Battletech. That's oh, cool. that's cool, dude. That's the cool. the grognards are probably like, like, just their mouth is drooling. Coping, right? seizing, molding, and dilating. Yeah. Is <laughs> but it's a, it's a, maybe it's like envy. We're like, ah, right, you can't do that. Well, oh, fucking good. stop me. Like literally, I, I mean, in I don't video, know. Every grognard I've ever met was really cool, and they're like they're yeah, well, down to play whatever. Well, grognards play. were a Napoleonic French battalion regiment, whatever, that were nicknamed the Grumblers. So it suits them. <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> they do grumble about everything, oh, though. It, they, so, so green for context, grognards are people that have been in the hobby for like so long, and the just have like, very opinionated uh, yeah. opinions on a lot yeah. of stuff. They're usually but, right. Yeah, they, yeah, like, they put a lot of <laughs> on there. Except sure when it comes play. to thirty twenty five only. Fuck that, dude. I saw that. I, there was um, I think it's big, not big red forty k, but it was somebody on YouTube was like, just play thirty twenty five, man. And I'm like, why? Well, no, okay. I want to play Star League, at least. I like oh, playing yeah. Clan Invasion for obvious when, reasons. And Jihad. Like, yeah, you like clans. Yeah. Before I had one hundred percent custody of my child. You thus, you know, no day or night without him. I yeah. was planning to start running games, and my local gaming store was like, fuck yeah, this is the coolest. Because I had actually quantified, okay, you want to use Star League mechs? We're going to go with the discovery of the Helm Memory Core. You can use Star League tech, yeah. but it's only one per lance, plus one if you're using more than one lance. Nice. Blah, blah, blah. Everything is intro tech, but you can use base, like, 30, it's 3039 I was setting it in. And okay, so yeah. that was, that's, that still gives you all access that you need to all the Star League tech. It lets Probably. the gameplay be a little bit further than just intro tech only forever. We, like, we say, oh, it's not pure, but that's just a cope for people who can't learn more than the most basic of the game's rules. Oh, LPX, yeah, yeah. what does that mean? I'm scared. A laser that has a bonus to hit? I don't know how to deal with that. What's so, this? Like, <laughs> great. And that's why we call Alpha tech, is because it is very, uh, it's very beginner friendly. Which is uh, not a bad thing, but if you stay playing as like a beginner yeah, for a game, yeah, I don't know. I, I wonder how Grognars feel about minimum range. Oh my god. Well, they, they love it because that's the only kind of game they play. PPC, what's that? Ultra Auto Cannon with no minimum range? Help! I need an adult! Yeah, man, who does that sound like? I brought oh, five oh, people oh, into the cool. game in my local area just by myself saying, I love this fucking game, and I got them to play it. I got them to play with artillery, hidden deployment, special pilot abilities, quirks, command abilities, 3070 tech. Dude, the game shines so bright when you play with quirks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The first two games they played had all of this, 
And by the third, one of them's like, can I deploy minefields? And I'm like, here's how you can do it. Yeah. Well, imagine we, we were playing with... Um, we were playing when Battle you, depl- yeah, when you teach time. people how to play with a complex game, but you know the game well enough that you can explain it quickly, qu- easily, adroitly, and just do it yourself so that your turn is spent instantly and you can help them with their turn. And you don't care about winning. You're trying to show someone how yeah. to play. Yeah, man. It's about having fun at the end of the day. That's, yes, I was but, um, I was talking to some people today about that. And I'm like, well, I use like tonnage to like quantify like what. Okay, at 30 to 25, that's sort of okay. But any yeah. stage past intro tech, it starts needing the BV or a gentlemanly agreement of not trying to break yeah. the game. I do usually the gentlemanly agreement because some BV is just absolutely cracked for no fucking reason. You gotta, you gotta stop bringing clanner tech unless I'm bringing clanner tech. If I if if I'm bringing clanner tech, yeah, battle, such as anything like, like mask or superchargers. Yeah, dude, the annihilator alone was already pretty fucked. The annihilator is just an atlas, man. It's atlas price, one hundred uh, tons, and it's not yeah. even an atlas. An atlas is way scarier. Dude, I just think that sixty damage oh, yeah, all your rolls is ridiculous per turn. How do we tell? Them, oh, guys? that's oh, we're talking about the Godzilla. Right. Yeah. 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 The Godzilla. Well, the thing is, Godzilla. the thing is, Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Clan Gorse Rifle weighs the same as an Innisfear AC-10. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's exactly right. Now, I also think that there could be some things changed with the balance, but this is just for my own league. My own friends and I, we we make our character sheets with my balance system in mind because it tends to work better. Ballistic weapons are shit tier. Clan mm-hmm. tech is too good. Yeah. So we try good. to reduce some of the overpowered nature of the clan tech. That's my problem with battle value as well. It's well, just... the, yeah, the battle value yeah. of an Intersphere ER medium is the same as a clan ER medium. That's seen there's where the problem resides. Is it's just like, I'm just going to take the clan version. Like, why wouldn't I? It does more right. damage. It costs the same. Right. So, like, okay. Sorry to go back to it, but in. I'm going to bring up Mega Mech on my own PC in a sec, okay. but basically what I've done to the, the Celestials with my themes, the Faust makes the Archangel look like shit, but it has comparable BV. Right. It's just that when you start using C3 and Nova Suites that it starts getting crazy. But I don't so- like... That the clan tech has no BV tax when, oh, but oh, it's okay because your pilots are 3 4 and that's the BV. Uh, yeah, okay. 1.3 times the battle value for your pilots to be better with the better tech is not the nerf you think it is, guys. So yeah. for me, Hell's Titan, I want to ask you from like one, like one. Sorry, like, I am rambling. Game. No, you're good. I, I, I appreciate it, man. Whenever we bring guests on, sometimes they're just like, yeah, it's cool. Oh uh, yeah, it's just like dead air for a while. We have that a couple sh- episodes. That sounds yet. shit. We did not okay, release, so- it was just like silent. Okay, um, just a second. How do um, you balance? So I'll, I'll let this question marinate. How do you balance somebody that wants to try super fucking hard in your games when you make this this system and these updates where it's just designed to be more in depth with this vision you have versus like meta gaming? Do you just flat out ignore the person or just okay, like bef- find a way before- to circumvent what they want to like op out? Okay, well, I was, and this is a bit of a shameless plug here, but I was planning to make videos about this. Oh, sweet. I, cool. No, I'm yeah, actually I down got, for that. I went and I got a fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Wait, so you're, 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 you're uh, are you a single father still? Or I am you, a single full-time, yeah, so 100% full-time. care father. Department yeah. of Child Safety stepped in on the mum, and I am the sole carer of my son. Well, yeah, well, is a oh. Dude, you are a, a, a great dad. You guys should have heard him. We were playing Minecraft one time, and his son was just like, Dad, I want to watch Bluey. And he's like, okay, yeah, sure. It's like, hang on, guys. I'll be right back. And just like immediately turned it on, got his kid comfy, came back. Kid had a great time. And I was just like, that's... Fuck, that's I can't remember. Time. I don't know. I didn't you know. remember that? I remember that. Yeah, it was I, like don't, the, I didn't think anyone game. else would. That's all. No, I, I remember <laughs> everything. Like I, I just remember random shit. But I remember that vividly because your kid was around, and you just like... Whenever you're raising a kid, boy. you, you want to go out of your way to make sure that, like, they're, yeah, they're like, comfortable. Revolutionary, know? I know, but I love my boy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When, when, uh, when I, if, got, like, I, I got a you job. Love your so I could, That's crazy. Holy shit. Yeah. Some people, yeah I man. got a job I when know. he was on the way. 
when he was on the way, I was living in university dorms. I got right. a place to live. I got a job as a disability support worker and I That's moved great. house when he was not, when he was starting to crawl because the house we were living in wasn't good. I spent my life on him because fuck everything else. But that's, and that's something some people know, just can't fathom when I, I, I personally do not have kids. Yeah, live for yourself. Yeah. I worked in childcare for about six years. And that's something I learned is that, and again, um, I don't know if um, Imperium of Doge is watching this, but old friend, shout out to you. He gave me some great, like, fatherly advice. And um, a friend of ours was having his first son ever. And he was really worried. What if I'm not a good dad? What if I don't? And he's just solar put it this way. makes you a good dad. That is one. He said that. And then he said, when you have that kid, you have this kind of metamorphosis moment where it's you're, you put your life kind of to the side and your, your child becomes the number one priority. Not in like a, I guess I have to do this, but he's worth it. The son or the daughter is worth this effort. You know, the thing is, would you agree with that or? Yes. He is okay. your child is your burden and your satisfaction. Like there is no greater calling to life. Life exists to continue, right? Yeah. How are you basically. going to continue? The future belongs to those who show up. Yep. Cope and seed antinatalists. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> so, um, but sorry. Um, um, this, 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 my, no, you're my, good. My you're good. I, I did want to ask. Aside from Blake and Comstar, what is your favorite faction? Okay, if I have to pick a canonical faction, I. I'm a big fan of the Raven Alliance slash Outworld Alliance. I got my friend to play as them. He goes hard, bro. Snow Ravens, what's up? Mad respect. Yeah. Well, you see, um, I have a friend who he's, he admits himself to be a casual. He paints his fucking minis. Sorry, paint. Okay. Let's- Oh, dude! Whoa, 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 whoa! Let's, let's, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. I want to oh, save that for a very special moment because I he I paints you wholeheartedly. He but, paints his minis in camo patterns with gold trim on accents. That's cool. I gotta go. That's actually for fucking sure. sweet, though. I, I gotta go. <laughs> you paint too, Green. What's up? What, what do you? I I put gold on like uh where all the missiles come out of that's on fine. a lot of my mechs. That's fine, dude. Sick. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but you don't have to Literally. do it well. But he doesn't do badly. But the thing is, he calls himself a casual. So he just says, look, I want something interesting. And this will tie into your previous question about like meta chasing and how to defeat right. it. Yeah. I was trying to make videos about it. But life got turned upside down. I got a job as a tree lopper. Um, <laughs> that's just it's called lumberjacks. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, down south. Tree lopper. Yeah, because the tree falls sideways or upside down. It goes like yeah. We have to remove them in ways that don't fall. The anti gravity harness before it falls. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Yes. (laughs) But but we're keeping that in. I got that, and that took all my time away from when I didn't have the boy, and then I got the boy 100 percent of the time. Now he's got his kindergarten age come along. I can take the time to do these podcasts. I can take the time to actually start making videos again that's in the works but uh the original thing of the the power gaming meta he wanted to be able to defeat it my housemate former housemate he wanted to play as the hired steel videos with the whole modified mechs and their look cool yeah. looking uh, oh look at that they've got missiles incoming punch a button out come the flares <laughs> Yeah, so, so that's the anti-missile system, Green. So when missiles no, come we, to you, we house rule that B pods and M pods yeah. can be used as an AMS once. Nice, that's cool. And we house rule. Green is rubbing his hands right now because he has four M pods on his Highlander. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. We also, we also house rule. Yeah, you know what it is. We also house rule that mobile sensor dispensers, rather than thirty sensor dispensers that do fucking what exactly nothing because no one right. plays with sensor rules the uav default deployers and instead of 30 you get six each one has six, six hp okay. yeah six Ooh. hp um Wait, six it goes HP. up yeah six hp the uav it goes up five levels from where you launch it it stays there for six turns it has six hp and a plus two tmm built in it That's spots, awesome. so you don't need it, a spotter. No, no it yeah, it is your spotter. And if you stand underneath an allied UAV, it tags one target for you. Nice. I got to bring more. Shot out of the yeah, sky. Man, 
it can be shot out of the sky. A medium pulse laser will kill it. Yeah, you could take like a rifleman and do that because that's like yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm putting my warhammer back in action. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, let's go warhammer. We we also like to use a liberal dose of either vehicular grenade launchers or clan improved one shot SRM twos. So I'm two a fan. Of the, of yeah, well, two of the SRM twos weigh half a ton if they're IOS clan SRMs. Oh yeah. Stuff and that into like a conjurer and run that little that loaded up with smoke <laughs> ammo is two smoke hexes in the game. Ooh, nice! I do like that. I do All like for that. the same that price at, at SRM ranges. And you can, what are you going to do? Miss the ground? Yes, you can miss the ground, but then it just scatters. <laughs> what are you going to do? Miss the ground? Well, actually, I. Well, actually, <laughs> you can, but it scatters. It doesn't not do anything. It just scatters right, a right. hex or two. But okay. the alternative is the vehicular grenade launcher, which instead of firing twice at range, it does a, um, an arc of three hexes right next to you. Oh, right. So he oh. uses. So he and I put together a lot of smoke launchers, heat uh, heat additions like Inferno SRMs, flamers, and a lot. He loves his plasmas and racks and LBXs. Not bad, not bad. He not ended up basically bad. the way he plays. With hidden deployment, urban mechs with a rack, two smoke dispensers, and fuck this uh, guy, fuck laser. this guy, fuck that guy. Yeah, no, guy he's got two, spot. I he's got two of them. Guy. No, okay, his pers- he's got a uh, Snow Raven, uh, Raven Alliance mixed with no, Avalar Guard. No, no, I'm so torn team. right now. The Raven Alliance is my second favorite. Like, yeah, he uses a he uses a Star of Avalar Guard, which is four okay. into aerospace. Yeah. And a trinary of first armored regiment, uh, Raven Alliance forces, okay. which is okay. which that's is a high very respectful. I just cannot stand the urban. It all fits in a union. The Dude, uh, the, 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 the trinary really fits cool. in the union. The urban mech <laughs> yeah. is a cool mech, but it's been kind of like sullied in its tar- uh, reputation. I blame Reddit. Well, yes, exactly. so bad about the fucking mech. annoying you mech, mech but, warrior but, online or mech warrior five when you get like. Well, the no thing stuff. is. Across the map by and this dude's tr- is it the same way in game like in the yeah. board game yeah in the board yeah. game yeah well the- he uses two of them with shitty pilots like they're, <laughs> they've got a they're okay. a three well, six that's, that's, that's how you do it that, there I, are I three say- six right they're yeah, decent three, at two, gunning because how hard is it to sit on a glorified turret and line up the exactly. cross <laughs> that's what that's what an urban mech is <laughs> it's, basically, it's basically a walking trash can with missiles taped to the side <laughs> it's a beautiful it's a beautiful piece of shit <laughs> oh okay i have to I have this to motherfucker this. this motherfucker <laughs> takes um in the com- i introduced he's one of the five guys that i introduced with the uh the quirks, the pilot abilities, and the command benefits. His command oh, benefits. Yeah. A standard company is three lances plus a pair of aerospace as a secondary lance force, right? right. He doesn't use the aerospace in his uh, company. He uses the command benefit of any number of his units at the start of the game can have a bonus to hit aircraft and a penalty to hit ground craft if he wants them to. So does okay. he throw that on the urban mech? He doesn't. You see, okay. this this is the first regiment's first company that he plays. Oh, so, they, they're like the so he's got elite fighters, yeah. right? And that's fine. So he gets the second command ability, which is hidden deployment. They're using active camouflage. They're being clever with their camo netting, and they're using appropriate camo for the theater that they're fighting in. So right. six or half, whichever is less, can be in hidden deployment of his of that force, right? He picks. That's, that's pretty good, man. That's that's some. Uh, I, I think that mechanic. I've seen it similar in Infinity. If you're running uses, like a full ninja list, where you just have the hidden deployment entirely, and yeah. Put down well, he, like he nine marks instead of pennies. He uses his SRM carriers, his light SRM carriers. Uh, his okay. urban mechs. Base. His. Oh, what was it? His. Uh, I think his Hellspawn and his Enforcer. I like that. the enforcer. Good choice. Yeah. Okay. So his first his first remember, star is a fire star. Again? Okay. A- AC ten and large laser with jump jets. Oh, hold oh, on. Yeah, I, yeah, I just yeah. saw your banner with um. Uh, that what's is that the the one comstar command box or is it both? 
Oh, that's a combination of them and something not, and the Night Star is from a different box set. I saw the Night Star. I, I have a spare Night Star in my. Yes, shockingly, I have a Com Star. They are the true but, Marauder too. Yeah, the Night Star is very cool. I like the Night Star a yes, lot. Yes, it is sexy. Now it's this a guy... fucking hot mech, dude. But the 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 Crockett, ooh, I love that design. Mm. Well, he is, is the designated crit seeker of the force. Yeah, Everything yeah, no, but heavy punch, and that guy's got two SRM sixes and an LBX ten. Fuck you. <laughs> no, I like the Crockett. I took the Katana version for me, though. Oh well, similar. Yeah, but also, but I, yeah, I so just this... wanted to send you this uh, this Urban Mac here. I painted this up a couple days ago. Um, oh, okay. I present oh, you the yeah. Xbox Urban Mac. This oh, is, I love this, is this so guy. Stupid. Oh, this this is so Halo. This is so fucking dumb. It's unreal. I was, this I was is so Halo. Uh, the MRM thirty. Yes. <laughs> Xbox. Sure. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna I was with, post a picture of the Serbian. It'll be on stream. I, I was I was with my girlfriend, and she's like, "What you painting?" And I'm and I just I don't know what possessed me to do it, but I was <laughs> okay. like, "Okay, as long as the Urban Mech like Xbox on," and then I'm like, "I'll have to paint the lenses red for the red one." Yeah. That's fine. Okay, yeah. so I've got this thing. Um, Sorry, I will finish my anecdote before I you're go good, on to other good, things. Good. I'm just, I want to get this. This is a thing that ties a couple of points across at once, that's all. Um, he makes this force, right? It's right. a fire lance with a rifleman as its commander, a balor, which is a mech we designed together, uh, an enforcer, and a hell spawn. The next force is a pair of urban mechs. Oh, sorry, no. The first force has also got a pair of Shkadi VTOLs as a single point, as you know, clan v, uh, clan vehicle rules. Very, very tasty VTOLs. Yeah, are... four ER smalls and an UAC ten on a VTOL. Thank you. Yep. Uh, the the security lance is a pair of Urban Max, uh, Merlin, a pair of light SRM carriers, and something. I'm trying to remember. What's the SRM carriers? Light SRM carriers are basically a 50 ton version of the SRM carrier with clan SRM sixes to fit. Okay. And okay. wheeled rather than tracked. It right. barely right. manages to fit at uh, the same exact armament and armor at 50 tons. So you only have to use a small vehicle hanger in the dropship space. So it fits in the yeah. union. <laughs> That's another big grin is they have like rules. So you've seen me play Mech Warrior, right? And then you, yeah. you, you go in on the dropship and stuff. There's rules to like have those dropships. And I think we're having official models coming soon with the Mercenaries Kickstarter. For dropships? Sure. Yes. Yeah. And yes. Pretty, if you have the old Jaguar, that thing is fucking awesome. I'm talking about Jaguar yes. or Evan Jaguar? No, 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 the, uh, the dropship. I'm sorry, okay, it's not yeah. called the Jaguar. The, uh... I, I got excited about Cauldron Born, my mistake. Apologies, lads. Yeah. I've got okay, to contain um, my excitement of murdering my neighbor. Also, yeah. I just sent to you a picture I'm going to try and uh, that's, that's a Phoenix Hawk? Send that to Jack. Dude. Jack loves Phoenix Hawks. Dude, Phoenix, Phoenix Waifu? Awesome. Yo, what the? Yo, Green. Okay, I'll get into that after I, after I talk about Evangelion. this force. Defeating uh. the meta, right? <laughs> meta gamers and power gamers, right? This guy... Our game. Every single time, nine times out of, well, not every single time, but nine times out of ten, he will defeat meta chaser lists with this thing as a casual. Because yes. meta chasers are based on the idea that it's just a stand up fight, right? So he's got all these things, it's combined arms. He's got a pursuit lance as his third, a, a pursuit star as his third, with a Vulcan, a fire starter, an assassin, a pair of SM1s, and a pair of Epona Primes. That right? is wait, so, a Piranha Primes or. Epona. Okay, I was like, Piranha? What, why is he running a Piranha? Epona. Yeah, I don't know Epona. what Epona is. Great, great it's a, it's the Legend of Zelda. Uh, and Epona no, no, is a 50-ton no, no. hover tank with four medium pulses and a streak four. Oh, I saw Stefan Amaris post about that on Twitter, actually. Yeah. And uh, the SM1 is a UAC-20 and four machine guns going 8-12 as a 50-ton yeah. hover tank. God damn. damn. Fucking I fucking hell. love the UAC-20, dude. I come every <laughs> <time>. <laughs> My other friend, Mannix, he, yeah, he's up. I like he plays a second lot. Like, he's doing the next He's doing the next one building a show. Dude, I'm Another one of my AC friends, Mannix. <laughs> 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 dude, God. if you get oh. a King Crab with two AC, uh, UAC-20s, oh. that's a double goon. It's, it's, it's cool, dude. It's no, no, cool. no, 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 Jack, I'll join the goon sesh. Oh. Let's go, we're joining. Let's go! Oh. No, get the King oh. Crab oh. royal variant, dude. That's a yeah. fuck, no, man. Oh, controversial man. opinion. Yeah. The King Crab 10 is better than the King Crab Quad Zero. 
Not a bad idea. I, I, okay. I partially agree. I think it's situational, though. Two LBX-10s, two SRM-6s, two PPCs, superior. Yeah, no, oh. you're, you're not wrong, because you don't even have to worry about ammo. But uh, ca counterpoint to you, Hellkite. I want my opponent to know what's coming, and I still want them to brace. I want, the, I I want, want them to, to know what's coming and double the range with better crit-seeking opportunities. Okay, yeah, I know, okay, but sure. grab, shoot, big cannon. Yeah, here, yeah, here's the thing. I want to, I want to vomit the biggest, fattest bullet of all time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, dude. And I want to hawk yeah. that loogie like a motherfucker. Yeah, King Crab like Two C. Yeah, King Crab Two C. We're gonna, We're gonna make King Crab Two C. That's it. I'm adding to the Blakest Nightmare a King Crab Two C. I'm naming oh, it the Lionel Please, please Let's for green sake. I please. will send please. you the record sheets when I'm done with them. Please send me the rules, man. Disgusting. Okay. It's going to be two oh, UAC be 20s, a T Bolt 15, a L Clan Large Pulse. Dude, Hellkite, right. let's, hop, let's hop in Blender. Let's make some 3D uh, print models oh, for it. Yeah, yeah I, actually, okay. though, bro. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Jack, you can print them in Don't Cinema. Jack. I have sent yeah. you yeah, some of the pictures of my Blender. Uh, I, I, I do made, have them up here. I have made the Faust. Yeah, it's not uh, just a record it. sheet, it's an actual model. So, so uh, on screen, guys, these are some. Um, and did you make these in Blender specifically? I made them in Blender. <laughs> polygon management. Actually, so it's a lot of polygons, but again, it's for a printed model, so you want that detail, which is that is the play for sure. Yeah, I made it in Blender, copying oh, the dude, archangel, it so ripping good. it to shreds, getting a crack and ripping it to shreds, and then just chop and changing them with some Homeworld Kadeshi swarmers for the smooth. Yeah, 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 brother. It's me. Yeah. So that's what this is here. Right? Yeah, don't show Catalyst Games that. Yeah, yeah don't the fucking fuck? shit their pants. This is a yeah, perfect segue. Any of this. Um, <laughs> side note, yeah, um, my, everyone. My, my favorite Together faction now. Either, um, either Diamond Shark or Grey, Grey Death Legion. Those fuck are, those Catalyst. Are yeah, yeah, fuck, fuck Catalyst, Catalyst Games. games. Actually. All together, fuck you, Catalyst. Suck fuck you, Catalyst. But you can't support Battletech without supporting them, motherfucker. I yeah, you can. Play. The game's been around before Catalyst. I learned to play company. the tabletop on Mega Mech. I printed out Castle Brian record sheets and uh, like sticky taped them together to make my maps. And I got cardboard standees to play. Fuck you. I didn't. That's some classic Battletech right there, though, bro. Because yeah. before there were minis, there were cardboard standees. That's some yeah, that's some dude. guild ball. Shit. Yeah, so, side note, oh, guild balls. We are catalyst. Oh, yeah. You want to do it? You can oh. suck my fat dick. <laughs> Guess what? People have been playing BattleTech for the last thirty years. Bro, I've been, I, I started playing like Mech Warrior when I was ten, dude. Left and like, not, I need to support Catalyst Games. I'm Australian. Free. Y'all don't even ship your shit over here, so I couldn't if I tried. Dude, that was oh, something when man. I saw your first video, you were like, yeah, man. And that was something that really put it into perspective for me for, like, how fucked the Australians are for, like, tabletop games. Like, Forge World? I yeah, don't I think th they even have, like, an outpost near... No, 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 no. So here's My... the fuck thing about Forge World and, and uh, Australia. It's okay. cheaper or just as expensive to buy Forge World shit as it is to buy proper GW shit. That's the fucked only up. difference is so I'll pay the shipping. They actually yeah. come out on top. When it comes to Forge World. <laughs> yeah. So let me get this straight. Forge World does a better job than Catalyst Game Labs shipping yes. to Australia. Yes, sir. Fortress oh. Minis. Fortress Minis. If you want to play Battletech and you're Australian and you're listening to this, go to Fortress Minis. They actually ship at a good rate. Fuck everyone else. Everyone else will have a link you on the shipping. Minis below, everybody. I've um, plugged them in the video you're talking about, yeah, though, that, that, Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because I, I, I got a link from them, yeah. They even they have hired a reasonable uh, price. Too. And that's the one thing that matters for me. I yeah. don't want to spend 200 of my dollars on a single on force pack just for the shipping. I yeah. remember it's that in, in the video, you, 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 you picked up the, uh, the art, you, like you loaded your cart with the artist proof Mad Cat, which personal favorite mech of mine. I know it's overrated, but it was the first mech I saw. I was no, man, the Mad Cat's really cool. I'm not going to front. No one's going to lie. The Mad Cat is fucking cool. And anyone who says otherwise, so good they made it's six a fucking it. idiot. Yeah, I, I, have, I have five Mad Cats in my possession. The Deep State doesn't want you to know this, but you can just have them. Yeah, anyway. I, I don't know, Especially because my Highlander might have some trouble, but once he opens up his four M pods, yeah. no, I'd win. Talk to my king. You mean the LBX-15? <laughs> <laughs> no, I really anyway, 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 I saw. So you had the artist proof Mad Cat, and then you bought that. Uh, what was the the bomber plane that they made the miniature for? You bought that, and it was like two hundred and sixty bucks to ship to Australia from Catalyst Game Labs in America. Two hundred and sixty US. 
Yeah. Oh, you fuck. Was that 510 in Australia? Yeah, like, that doesn't even account for 510. 390. Australian 390? That's not as much as 510, but fuck, there is 190. Okay, there is and one three. That's just good for thing. Tech, that's yeah, two there minutes. There is one good tech. thing about Battletech in Catalyst Games, right? And it's the same thing. It's like, Battletech is shit for the same reason it's awesome. Right, the tragic comedy is real, and in this case, it was, <laughs> and in this case, it was real in real life. BattleTech Catalyst Games was good to me for the same reason that they're shit to everyone else. They fucked up real bad. Dude, you when I ordered clan... from them for the first time, they fucked up my order. The, I, I wanted you the box. The clan Buster Black Knight. Yeah, yeah. You remember how it was so good that it sold out in a single hour, and they decided to do a second run about two months later. Yeah, the the, the made the I had an alert one, yeah. for that. I had a Google right. alert for them releasing it when I heard that they were going to do it again. Mm -hmm. My Google alert said, it's on. I had saved the money for this. I went right. online. It's not on the Australian site, of course. So I go to the regular site. I get my clan buster and I get a Comstar command level two. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the one with the, the crab, the, the yeah. guillotine. Yeah, the king yeah, crab, the highlander, one. and the black knight. Holy I shit. I like that. I like that. That's such a good box. Oh, it is I, such a good box. It, it is fucks. It's it so it doesn't just have sex, Maxi. It fucks. It, it is. So I picked up that box because I was like, okay, Comstar why not? I want to paint Comstar. I like painting white. I have a solar. I hate I have a, painting I have a solar white. Watch. I love how it looks. And it was super fun. I, I I cranked through I think fifteen mechs in like two hours. Yeah. Um. But okay. So I did this within five minutes of getting the alert. Yeah, brother. Right? I spent the 260 bucks. Right. Well worth it for a Black Knight. Uh, for the, for uh. the Clan Buster Black Knight. Now, Doge Dad, I sent you a picture of a Black Knight in a fucking... Yeah. Is this not what you came here to see? Are you not entertained? Well, one, it's a Merrick Black Knight, which means glorious no, no, no. Merrick. It's my Black Knight. It's the right, Volcom Knight. Right, I'll get right. that's okay. The, I've that got a few things in my night. backlog. Yeah, uh, I'm going to send this to you because it's it's in house merit colors, which is also just a puppet state it's, for Comstar. It's in Therefore, my yeah. it's in my personal livery, my mercenary company. It's it's very good. I love the uh, immediately. I looked at that. I'm like, that looks yeah, like a my, Merrick Black Knight. Yeah, that well, the thing hard. is, okay, um, this Black Knight. They send me a message two weeks later, an email. Catalyst Games says, sorry, mm -hmm. we overpromised the Black Knight. We know that we said it was available for you to order when you pressed ship and that we took your money. Uh... But we couldn't give you your Clan Buster Black Knight. So we're not going to charge you or send anything because we saw you got a, a battle mat and a Comstar group. We're just not sending you the order and we'll refund it to you. Uh, I'm like, well, cool, thanks, guys. The money is really what I wanted as opposed to yeah, the limited yeah, edition right? the extra fuck? poseable Black Knight. But then you know what uh, happened three weeks after that? You got your order anyway. They arrived. Yeah! <laughs> Let's go. Idiots. <laughs> so I got I, my fucking wait, clan buster. And you see that mech that I put, uh, if you put a picture up on, on the actual video. It'll, it'll, it'll be on the video, yeah. I'll send a few Score pictures of it. For the boys, I'll send a few. Pic yeah, it's I'll send a few of it in various poses. It's standing on a puma because I ripped the puma apart with the sentinel from the Comstar box puma. set. To yes, the adder what puma. Are you thing. Skinner, bro, I ripped the them apart. Puma? I ripped them both apart to make a fucking lobo. It looks because so good. It looks really I'll send good. Send you the man. lobo as well. Phenomenal. But right, that. That is my Clan Buster Black Knight. I turned my regular Black Knight into a Clan Buster by using a Gaines Workshop Chainsword. There I see that! Nice. So that's that piece right there, Green. That's excellent, man. Look, it looks absolutely lovely, guys. Great paint job, man. The lasers look super Thank good. You. Glory to House Merrick. <laughs> Just the Thousand Worlds League, the Free Worlds League, holler at me, guys. Love you. The only good okay. Merrick is a dead Merrick. Glory to House Merrick. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, even as a Blakist, I can agree. Hey, the only <laughs> hey! Thomas oh, Merrick right. is dead. Thomas Merrick yeah. was the master. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that was something like immediately because I talked to you like in May when we met in Boomer Tech Server, and I'm like, I'm thinking of playing House Merrick, and I, I kid you not, everybody. Seventy six minutes later, I can sum up what uh, Hellkai told me with basically a sentence. House Merrick is controlled by Comstar, a.k.a. the Blakists. 
And I got like an insane Battletech crash course history lesson from that that I will never forget because it was awesome. And that is one reason why I have both Comstar command boxes. Comstar yeah, so do so I. Cool, dude. Okay. I, I split the Comstar Command Level 1, the one with the regular crab, I split that in half for my custom mercenary company. Well, yeah. But the, the, the one with the King Crab and the Highlander and the Black Knight, I, that's, that's all Comstar, Comstar, baby. That's, that's all, all Comstar. Comstar. Oh, yeah. You know what? Dare say, Jack, my Black you know Knight, what I'm Black Knight's ass. I'm saying I'm that right now. That's what I thought. <laughs> 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 but. Fuck yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, so to go back to the thing, the. um. The guy who makes his mercenary core thing. Yes. We have discovered that mercenary core, aka rebuilding your mechs, modifying them to be a long game version of what they were originally created to be, and smoke launchers. You want to beat your Gundam builds? You want to beat those fuckers with five to seven jump points and targeting yeah, computers with pulse lasers? They're green. Smoke. I'm going to get some smoke grenades. Smoke, smoke counts as a point of cover. Yeah. Three points of cover and you can't see them. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. So they are all the alone. For smoke? What, isn't it it like doesn't. It, no, no, no. It's the same BV as regular. Which means... So basically that means... You, you like get yourself a... Okay, um, you're playing clans? You get yourself I, I, an Arctic... I, okay, get an Arctic wolf. wolf. Oh, yeah. Arctic Wolf. Okay, I can yeah, you know the one with the eight SRM fours, the two SRM sixes. Yes. Smoke SRM sixes. SRM sixes have a you know a dropship sized th uh, seven hex deployment zone of smoke. It's I'm gonna get some of those uh, SRM sixes yeah, then. I'm gonna. Just load, them, just load up. Just load up the SRM sixes with smoke. You don't need those two sixes. You got four SRM. You got eight SRM fours. What the fuck do you need another twelve when you've got thirty two? <laughs> you know. Okay, you're a walking war crime in BattleTech, man. And this is no, no, no. This isn't even war crime. This is just as, okay. They, some call it battle. This isn't a war crime. This is just a crime. This. Yeah. this, is, no, like this is, some call him, it battlefield yeah. shaping. I call it battlefield pollution. <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay, so what you do, apart from the standard of, oh, look, this dude is moving his fucking Gundam build, you know, pulse lasers, targeting computer jump jets into close range of me. Okay, cool. The second they do that, if you can, and if you, even if you can't, you just deploy smoke everywhere you can, right? They move their Gundam build into you. Congratulations, you're all alone. Hell, three points really of three hexes of three. smoke in the way will prevent line of sight. That's fucking and hard, it, dude. An SRM six can do that. You layer yeah. on that smoke and you isolate that Gundam build and you brutalize them in close range. Smoke them if you got them. He figured it out. He figured it out by just using a couple of smoke things. You know what it does? <laughs> Every single fucking time you play with smoke launches and LBXs slash racks slash plasmas as your mainstay, yeah. you eat Blakists with their C3 networks. Oh, what's that? Battle value tax? I don't have that. I can just have elite pilots. Battle value players in <laughs> your side watch right now. Smoke. Yo, okay. It Did defeats you, um... so much of the meta chasing. Could you make a, a trebuchet 2C for me, please? I would appreciate Heavy that. blasters and I have already done it. It's got a large pulse right. laser, two clan ER medium lasers, a clan LR15, oh. and a clan oh, arrow okay. 4. Yeah, I remember that. Heavy yeah. blasters was talking about that. Like in what, like we've July? got it. Or we've got it. Yeah, we we made yeah. it that long ago. It's still there. It's still beautiful. Yeah. 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 Oh, what's that? What's that milk mech building website? Uh, the more you guys tell Doge Dad shit, the more I'm gonna need it. Yeah, he's okay. He's okay, a, you can right. go to mordel.net. If you want to use it on flex sheet on your tablet, for instance, I um, I you go to flex tablet, sheets. I yeah, I have a tablet okay. that I yeah, can when use. You for use Fle <laughs> yeah, well, when when you play with flex on the tablet, right? No, no. Well, look. Okay, playing it on your tablet is really good with flex sheets. No, I, I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm yeah. just, green doesn't but have a tablet. That's if you want to make question. custom shit, you go on the list of it's like, oh, how do I make an MTF? You go to Mordell.net. You can download the MTFs from the site that you've put them onto. And you can just upload them onto your flex sheets and you can make your custom stuff. All right. That's awesome. Note. Yeah. Note flex only accepts bipedal mechs with certain equipment. You won't be able to use laser heat sinks, for instance. Well, he does. He comes from Connaught. He's a test pilot. That's how he gets access to Kong Interstellar and all that shit. 
Yeah. He's a Solaris gladiator in the Lyran Alliance. He, right. He's like Muhammad Hassan. You know, right. the WWF, like, I'm the yeah. most the Arab the Iron Sheik. Not, not the other oh, Hassan, the, the, sheep, the annoying one, Hassan Lager, so a coward. Oh, yeah, this we're dude, not going to talk this about dude, him. He won't even fight tonight. This dude is the most Marek Free Worlds Liga Marek ever to Marek. And, and that's what I love about him. That's why he's my top guy. <laughs> no, no, that, this, yeah. that's my dude. That's my Black Knight pilot. He, he, he is he is Volkai's top guy. Yeah, Samuel Hentels, the most oh. Marek. <laughs> <Marek's top guy? laughs> I could be Volkite's top guy. He could be Volkite's top guy, dude. Uh, All right, yeah. so okay, Volkite. <laughs> yeah. so, we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up with that here. Welcome to the league. We got four six of Islam, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, gentlemen, what are you guys doing uh, this this coming week here, as of February twelfth, twenty twenty four? Oh, what, what about Valentine's Day? What about I'm not, Valentine's I'm not, Day? I, uh, we're not going to share like our. Yeah, never mind. No, I'm forget I that. said that. Freak. Cut that out. There's yeah, a bad. beautiful woman whom I am in getting involved with, who I will be spending some time with. Ooh. But nice, man. that's awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, her kids are all much older than mine. Whatever. Well, you, you know, know what? So here's the thing. Uh, as um, so my parents both divorced when I was relatively young. I was I think it was like ten or twelve, and it it was it was whatever to me. It was somebody. As long as, you know, I'm usually on my dad's side, my dad went through a couple of girlfriends. Yeah. And it was just kind of like, okay, cool, this is the person. And I just really wanted to see my dad happy. That was that. Well, was you see, yeah. Me. And, and as long as he had a good time, I didn't care. It was well, the thing friend. is, she has kids of her own. Right. Last year, they got him a big stuffed triceratops for his birthday. Oh, they that's all, very cool. We all right. kind of get it. We all kind of understand. And we're all good with it with each other like you shouldn't i honestly believe you shouldn't try and date a parent without at least somewhat accepting the idea that you're going to have to place actually this like literally this dude if you were if you're going to date, them, if you're yeah. gonna date them get involved with the kids too fuck you and I'm a father. Thing, i refuse it, to not be involved with anyone i refuse to be involved with someone who didn't want to get i turned down a, a prospective girlfriend because she said she didn't know if she would be able to love my child as much as any children she Dude, I would turn him down too. If, if I had a yeah. son and she said that to me, I'd be like, "How? Like, what's your problem?" Lady? No, no, no. Like, no, she said it like, "I'm sorry, but I'm worried about this." And I said, "Well, this is a fair concern, yeah, right. and it's a very legitimate thing for you to be worried about." And I'm glad that you brought it up. I just hope you understand that I am also reasonable in saying that I don't know then that this would be a good idea if you're worried about that, and thus it might manifest because of the worries. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate okay. So that you brought it up, and I am going to. Yeah, it's like it's fair for her to worry about not loving him as much as her own, but it's yeah. also fair for me to does look she, out for mine. Does the woman have her own? She doesn't have any. But okay, yeah, so what, then what why else? is she worried about it? Like, well, no, well, I, she I get that because I feel I feel the uh, same way. Whereas I don't think I could if I if I were to get involved with a woman that had a kid, I and, and then me and her had a kid. I have a genuine concern that I would love my like blood child more than I would love the uh, you would and this is, an, yeah. this is the fact right inevitably you would but it's not about how much you do love them it's about how much you show do you spend time with this other one do you show them that you care about them or are right. you just trying to take time away from their mum for the younger sibling Ex exactly and that's why I couldn't do it like you shouldn't you shouldn't get with a this ties in with the whole you shouldn't get with a parent without wanting to at least be somewhat involved with the kid Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it was it was very much, it wasn't like a father thing, like, hey, I'm your new dad, which wasn't the case because I still saw my dad. My right. parents, yeah. both, it was an amicable divorce. They were both very nice to each other regardless. Um, but it was more like, let me, let me try to like parent stuff out the way I've wanted to do without overstepping that boundary. Just kind of like being the cool, like the, the, like the cool yeah. other parent. You don't and want to try and move do. in on them. Exactly. And it, 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 was, it wasn't that. You want to try and make friends with the kid. And look, if you yeah. want to be a parent, you have to learn how to do this at some point. He, was, uh, it, he didn't move in. It, it, was, it was less that. It was just more like, well, let me just give some, some good advice. Let me lend yeah, some, and that's some fine. stagely advice. And that's good. Genuinely, dude, I think the world needs more people that can do that. Just, it doesn't matter what, whether you're your biological dad or not. Just, you know. I, I, I totally let your, agree. Let your children know how much you care about them, dude. It's important. Yes, even, even if they're not your biological biologically. Kid. Yeah, yeah, dude. For real, for real. No, well, you see, I also I managed to get lucky in in a way, I guess, with 
uh, my child's mum. You see, I left a, a domestic violence situation. Oh my god, man, I'm so sorry. Like, I was a world-class Muay Thai kickboxer, like, welterweight. Yeah, I remember, um, a giant, I don't know if you know who the Giant Slayer is, but he did bring you up in a, in a discussion about Damn. kickboxing. You know who the Giant Slayer is? I do know who the Giant Slayer is, I'm just yeah. surprised he remembers me. Yeah, so he brought <laughs> you up, like, in passing, and I was Mikhail, like, yeah, I know that guy! Fucking, Mikhailovich fucking talked about me? What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that's, so the that's giant, the giant slayer, giant. Is, he, is he Serbian or Romanian? I can't remember. Serbian, I think. Yeah, so he's a, so green. He's a Serbian MMA slash kickboxer who does yes, MMA I, fights. I've, I've plugged his fights when I was doing Very my cool, um, dude. bad wrong battle tech. Shit yeah, he, he's a super cool guy. He's done some artwork for me. Um, I've mm -hmm. shouted out a bunch of his streams. I remember he absolutely bodied that guy that dressed like the Black Panther in that one fight yes. a couple <laughs> months ago. Was that was good. crazy awesome. It, like. The dude showed it was a good fight all around. But like, yeah, Giant Slayer brought you up. I just wanted to mention he was like, Yeah, you know, that that Hokai guy posted a couple of my streams, it's cool. And I'm like, Well, what can I do to help you out? And he's like, yeah, just whatever, man. Just talk about it. I I just I did not know he remembered me. I, I, oh. yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I could post a video if you guys want of my fucking of one of my ring fights. Maybe. You know what yeah, yeah. you know so do you know who Imperium of Doge is? Because everybody that I've like discussed with on like the cast cast i'm trying to get giant slayer on here as well but i know him a, him a, a this knight. yeah he know does like him. he he dresses up in knight armor and fights oh yes yes, yes oh yes yeah. that shit i used yeah, to do uh, okay i do the reenactment i don't do it in the ring no no, no he's, he's in the 1v1 rings man yeah i just do bow hurt nice dude. <laughs> cool. but that's awesome but I, man. um yeah i was okay I can send photographic proof of my nomination to represent Australia because no, no, I, 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 I believe you too. That's fucking awesome. But like, yeah, no. So I was a world class Muay Thai kickboxer. Like, goddamn. Well, yeah, I don't want you to send me for proof. I want you to send me because it's badass. Yeah, yeah. It's just like third in the world dude. welterweight. Two thousand. Damn, dude. Oh five, nice. Yeah, so I was just eighteen. Five. No, that's when you want to place that high. But um, it's right. an embarrassing, humiliating, like it's a, a, a whole new level of different kind of humiliation and embarrassment to have to lose to some bitch when she tries to sw swing on you because if you do oh, anything right. back, the Duluth model kicks in. Like I picked up Muay Thai because I was getting bashed up in school. I pick it up, I become world class, I go into the ring and I fucking dominate into martial art tournaments in the meantime, like some sort of Yujiro Hanma wannabe, except I look stick thing because yeah. I'm only welterweight and I'm six foot through six foot one. Oh damn. Um and then some drunk bitch tries to swing on you and punch on you while she's holding Yeah. She's biting you in the ribs and she's punching you when you're lying down holding the not even one year old kid as he's asleep and then you put her in an arm lock to stop her punching you just to stop her not even to like hit back I actually no no she so, screams yeah. blue murder domestic violence is shitty but even after that like the next day she's like you fucking parasite get out of my house like i've already got the friends coming along out of the house like yeah. this is becoming too common I, and on top of that, it was, it was so the, the headlock, that's a neutral hold. It's not a, it's not aggressive. It's not going to arm. arm, arm it, it is designed arm to just, oh, arm lock. Okay, so it's just designed yeah. to restrain. Yeah. Yeah, just so grab around the pinky, twist the hand so it's pointing upwards. So essentially what you're doing is, it's, it's uh, and just, just hold it away. This. You're, so what yeah, you're doing in this situation is you're, you're, you're keeping her from, yeah, no, I get you're, that. You're, you're, one, you're restraining an arm so she can't reach something. And usually yeah, and the other arm has a kid in it. So yeah. what she does is she screams blue murder in his ear like I'm hurting her. Like, well, I guess it does oh, hurt if you resist it. But, right? This boy was like a couple of months older than a year old. He's four on Sunday. He's four in a couple of days. Oh, congratulations. Hey, I've got, happy yeah, really got a whole bunch of his friends coming around and the big fucking Adventureland party. Oh, that's awesome. I decided dude. to splurge for it. It's good. But that's how long it's been. His mother and I have at least agreed to try and work together with the co-parenting and the custody thing. She was always cooperative insofar as she gets her way with the timing, like the schedule yeah. over the weeks. But yeah. within that, 
within that, she kind of understands that I'm putting a lot of work in. She knew that I wasn't going to like abandon it. She kept the boy as opposed to aborting him because she and I didn't think we were ready. She found out nine weeks in and I'm like, well, this is real touch and go. This is like towards the edge of where it's legal to go with just chemical. Yeah, I'm okay with the idea of it. Like if you can take a pill and the miscarriage happens, then that's not surgically removing it. Right, yeah, I, I have, agree. When it, when it gets to like the six months area, she was pregnant. that's where it's weird. Yeah, well, she, we only found out she was pregnant when he had fingers and toes and they were wiggling around in the ultrasound and we're like, no, we got to keep this kid. Right. And she said, yeah, you know what? Recently, just a couple of weeks ago, she said, yeah, I kept him happily knowing that you would obviously look after him and all that. What a bitch. Oh. No, no, no. As in, as opposed to knowing that the, the dad would be a deadbeat what? dad and walk out she right. knew that the dad would at least be a dad. Yeah, well, here's the and thing. That was, okay. And, and she knew, that, I think she knew I would be a dad. And she, over her. Yes, no, the thing is, child safety. She got drunk in a public park. There was no nice. one else there. She got drunk. Her story is some random person gave her a, a drink or two. But if she was going to get drunk in a enough, public park. Yeah, okay. but she was going to get drunk enough okay. alone or with just this other dude that passers-by called the cops because she didn't look like she was looking after him well enough at 6.30 p.m. No, that's a real thing. That's a, Okay, so that's a real thing. Yeah, I see that's that all crime the time. kidnapping hours. Yeah. To be alone at the park, incapacitated. And he normally goes to sleep. He puts himself to sleep at like 7, 7.30. Like he, he, I've, I've been blessed with a good sleeper. He got awesome. home at 8.30 from the cop shop. Man. The oh next day, God. here I am, vomiting sick. Child safety department comes along, calls me and says, you have to pick him up. We'll call you a taxi to there and back. Because I had recently lost my car. I had recently right. lost my housing security. And now I have lost my job because I have to look after my child 100% of the time. I did that through the DV, through this, through all of it. I picked him up and they're saying to me, look, we've seen that you are above and beyond what we would expect from a parent. So they gave him to me straight up, like no questions. That's asked. awesome, dude. Fuck, that's and they, awesome. They, they fast-tracked me getting the parenting payment stipends and everything like that. They, they've helped me a lot. Hell yeah. Man. The Duluth model didn't have to come into play because the mom was demonstrably fucked. Now, yeah. I fucking love my boy and I'm so glad to have him, but he did put a stop to my videos. <laughs> he did. <laughs> that's okay, man. I know... Um... Um, Heavy Blasters and I are making a podcast of our own. We're trying to record some episodes and shit. Hey, oh, yeah, so he I was going to awesome. ask you about that because me and Alonis Pius were on your first episode. When's that yeah. coming out, motherfucker? We're trying to record more episodes and release them as a season. Oh, but, okay, okay. Oh, man, I'd be down. But, That'd be awesome to be but, on. Um, he's there. He's in the background, and he's probably going to be in the background. So Hellboy is a fixture. Hellcat awesome. Hellboy. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, Hellboy. Love it. <laughs> yeah. But um, I just I'm sorry I went in such a fucking no 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 you're good no, about no, it. It's totally okay, why, man. Yeah. That's why we have guests on so we could learn. Le- legitimately, man, it's it is an interview. It's it's not like we're gonna be like, okay, well, yeah. looks like it's ninety minutes. Got to say goodbye. That, yeah. That's stay, stay on topic. Well, stay on topic. We gotta stay on topic, Jack. And they can't thing, talk about okay. wieners again. Well, I thought I thought you. <laughs> I've got one more thing on my backlog that I want to kind of get into because this is a bit of a okay. fucking a weird plug, but it is a plug. And I kind of... You guys okay. are talking about the waifu phoenix hawk that I painted? Yeah. I am particularly proud of that koi fish. Now... I like the koi fish up, on it. If you look up Mercurial Mouse Car on Google, I'm going to do it myself to see if I get it. You'll see. This is a friend of mine. Like... IRL friend, I've, we've hung out, we've been drinking, we've all that blah blah blah. Mercurial mouse, one word. Right. She's a bit of an eager. Oh yeah, it's the first Google Images result. It's like a six-minute long video. This car was the basis of the Phoenix Hawk I painted. She's a nice. Like, yeah. She and I have been friends for a, like a, a rather long while. Um, drinking <laughs> buddies, hangouts, and stuff like that. Her car is in our hometown infamous like this car is yeah I everywhere. Bet. like yeah like it's a white fucking skyline with the sakura blossoms and a red koi f- and a pink koi fish and if you look at the phoenix hawk waifu it's that and i've showed oh, this yeah. to people 
I've shown this to people who I didn't think would know her. Oh, and they're just like, hey, that's okay. the car. It's that car. Yeah. I was that's playing awesome. Battletech in my local gaming store, seven hours drive away, and this guy's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that Mercurial Mouse's car in <laughs> next one? <laughs> that's awesome, dude. She... <laughs> She saw it on my Instagram and she's like, holy fuck, the waifu's got a Gundam. I'm like, well, yes, the, the Phoenix waifu's Hawk got a Gundam. Gundam. Yeah. You're just like, her <laughs> actually. No, 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 no. The Phoenix that. Hawk is pretty close to a fucking Gundam. That cross yeah, it's pretty Hawk close to a really Gundam. Cool. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I kind of, she plugged me. She's got like 10 times my reach thanks to being an e-girl. So yeah. I kind of got to do the plug. But I'm just proud enough that I managed to get this thing done good enough that people recognize what it's a tribute to and also holy shit that koi fish dude that it's I have fucking painted. Right? if you know the scale of battle tech this is like one to 265 i think it's way. yeah <laughs> shoot you know how many times i fucked up on that fish that i had to redo no, in man, I two times two times i think the, the hardest five. thing for me i've had three, oh. five times fuck that dude i would have just quit Fuck that. It's what? IRL? What? It's, it's right there in front of me. A failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm finished. Yeah. I, I, I felt the same way when I was doing... Um, I, I, I don't know if you play Infinity, but I have... There's a, a Zeta unit. It's a big robot mech. Profit and I did I, try to buy inf an Infinity starter kit. I wanted to go... Infinity is really fun. Yeah, yeah, but the cool. Was, really but the cool. problem was... Shipping. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. Yeah, yeah that's, I feel that's like that's every true. game we talk about, it's like, yeah, I want to get into blank, but shipping. No, I so in, in Rose Belly is, is a company from Spain, so I was going to take the Hawk Islam dudes like the word of Blake. So that's fucking sweet. Yeah. That would be cool. I'm going to be repainting my Skitari slash Imperial Knights as the word of Blake. That's Inshallah, awesome, bro. brother. <laughs> so like, I'm, I'm going to round this out here with this, but like, um. So I, I, I freehanded the word destroy in Cyrillic on a Zeta unit. You and it, it, double it almost G. broke me. I, I, yeah. I got it. It looks really good, but like, I don't know how I did it, man. Okay. It's calligraphy. I haven't written in Cyrillic in a long time. And uh, I had to yes. paint white, white paint, Cyrillic letters. Not easy. Yeah. Fuck no, it's well, not. Were, were no, you doing seriously. Cyrillic in script or Cyrillic in print? Script. Fuck that, dude. Yeah. Okay. okay, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Difference. One of my first pictures, not one of the pictures, one of the first mix, I, uh, things I painted when I started getting back into hobbies was um, I was I was redoing my Astartes. Oh, nice. Um, they were based on the Sasanian Empire Jayadin Immortals. And if you look up the Sassanid Empire flag, and you see I know that, about the like, Sassanid Empire flag. Yeah, the crimson and yellow nerd. thing. Yep. I did that freehand. That you did this standard. Oh my god, nice. bro. Oh, that looks great. I'm going to look it up and I'm going to send it to you just so you can see it. I only know about the Sassanid specifically as the direct opposition of the Byzantine Empire. I don't know much about them other than that. Well, I just wanted something different. You know, my white sky. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, bikers, bikers, scouts, and dreadnoughts with drop pods everywhere. Right, right. Nice. Well, um, with that, I don't know. Um, what are you guys looking to wind down at with this week? Um, I'm just, I'm actually going to go celebrate Valentine's Day with my girl. Yeah. I think we're going to go do like a like a dinner and then make like a non sugar cheesecake because I'm a type one. Four day days day. after that. I'm going to be setting up this big fucking party with all the mums at my kids' playgroup. It's kind of dude, interesting being the only dad that awesome. goes there regularly. Yeah. No, no, dude, that's that, like that. That shit. He's going to remember that. Like, it's it's what's up, Jack? What are you oh, doing? He is. Oh, one moment. For Valentine's Day. Uh, fucking working. Yeah, well, me too. You want to go bar hopping after work? Maybe. Depends. Right, what, what, which day is Valentine's Day? Is it a Friday? It's or? a Wednesday. Fuck me. No, I can do it. If Green can bar hop on a weekday, you can do it. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 I was just using the bathroom. What are you saying about bar hopping? I have work on Wednesday. I have work on Thursday. Uh, look. Dude, I tell you what. If you come up to Fort Collins, yeah. Can I get a fucko with him, man? Uh, that's not going to happen because I have work on Wednesday and Thursday. All right, Hellkite, is there anything you would like to say to the rest of the attendants of the speakeasy? It can't be the N-word.
It cannot. It cannot be that. Uh, way. Cannot be. Okay, sorry. I was just taking a slash. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm. I'm pretty good for stuff. I've been rambling and raving all. No, day, dude, so. you were you were an absolute pleasure to have on the cast, man. Hopefully, yeah. we can. Bring I look you back. forward to being on here more if you can. Stomp Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I want to do a one-on-one -on -one with me and you about game design because I'm designing a game system right now. And yeah, I want cool. To I mean, I'd also be um. I'd also be happy to get you onto the heat critical. Oh yeah, dude, that would be super fun. I'd be super down for that. Do you, oh, I haven't actually made like an a... official podcast appearance in like other places ever. Um, I was supposed to do that with Atomic Shaman, but it was my it was my girlfriend's birthday party, so I did not go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, he was like, uh... "Where are you?" And I'm like, "I am at a party." And he's like, "Fuck you." <laughs> do you have like a uh, like a set timeline on when you want to release uh, your podcast? Uh, well, heavy and to actually record it first um i am in the process of moving and looking after my kids so i've got a, a truck a tricky situation yeah. well you know what man March, i move and after that i've got to get set up the new wi-fi i've got to mm. get everything organized in that way but once i get it it's gone you know well hellcat i've got nothing but time man so absolutely take your time you know you have priorities that come first so don't worry about me uh, well, yeah, I'm just saying, like, I'll gladly get you in. One day, and I don't know if this matters or if it's stupid to say, but one day we kind of hope to get Razor Fist in on it as well. Oh, that'd be sweet. We've we got a couple of people who may be friends with him, talking to him on a regular basis in our server right now. So, yay. Right. Might be a foot in the door once we get some videos recorded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, well, gentlemen... And ladies, if any ladies listen to this, um, thank you for tuning in to uh, another episode of the Speakeasy. I've been Doge Dad. Yeah, this has been Doge from New Jersey. <laughs> Yo, this has been the Volkite Hellkite, the Death Ray Dragon. Cool. Uh, this has been Green Doge. I, what the fuck is minimum range? <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>